Hello, this is Chris Nielsen with the uh, Sage Leader Series, and uh, I've got a, a cool guy here, Lucas Barra, with the Radical, Radical Sales Coaching. That's his business. He's been doing it for a number of years, and we had a conversation a few years ago, and I know a lot's happened uh, since then, Lucas. What, what have you been up to? And, and <laughs> first, welcome, and then what have you been up to in these uh, last couple of years? Man, so much. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's a pleasure to be back. It's a little bit of a different setting yeah. than, than last time. Last time we were in a, we were in a nice uh, the place in Del Mar. We were in a nice You're place. Right. We were by the pool. There's no no pool in sight for either of us, right, as far as I can see. So I think that's definitely one of the things that has changed. Yeah, and... we were at the Bay Club in Del Mar. Beautiful setting. Yeah, relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what's yeah. happening for you now well i'm doing a lot of work from from home and um that's one of the things that has changed in terms of the way that i i, I do my business now is i do a lot more i work with a lot of clients on zoom now before when we were talking i was working with about 90 percent of my clients in person doing in-person coaching because I, I coach salespeople and entrepreneurs on how to grow their businesses. So business has changed quite a bit for me in, uh, in the last, like almost completely in the last two years, two and a half, three years since we've talked. So it's been for the better though, because now I can help more clients and talk to them on a more consistent basis, which is great. Well, yeah, I love that you've taken I, I see so many people in this time, some people shrink and some people actually expand. And in my work with CEOs, I see so many of them actually expanding when they have a support network. So you provide tremendous support to salespeople and entrepreneurs. What would you say is the biggest thing or some of the big things you've helped them, you know, in, improve their game in these times? Sure. Yeah. Well, productivity has been one because, I mean, working from home is a whole different beast for a lot of people and then learning how to, to deal with all the challenge the mindset i mean mindset has become one of the core focuses of my business and so i'll work with clients on how to have better perspectives on the challenges that they're incur incurring when they're making their sales calls or when they're coaching their sales people and how to how to communicate effectively to those people because when you especially now it can be so tricky to make sure that that's done the right way that and once you can change that it makes the performance of the business go up which is what it's all about in the first place what what would you say are some of the keys that you help them out with in terms of mindset yeah well limiting beliefs is is one of them because there's a lot of beliefs that they have about themselves or their employees or sales people that they don't even realize they had like when i see a lot is like their performance is not good enough and it's very typical from a driven ceo or business owner to see that they're progress of a salesperson is not good enough and the problem is that in a scenario like that when the salesperson doesn't see their progress it's always like more and more and more and more and more it, then they don't really feel like they're making progress so they end up leaving the business owner I mean, if you have somebody who's listening who's a business owner they may say like well why are all these people live like leaving like i i, I don't i don't understand like what i'm doing that's an example of a belief like that that can get in the way that I help a lot of people with. Uh, you, you hit on one thing that I really like is that um, uh, oftentimes we with a 30,000 foot view, if we own our own business, which I do as well, um, oftentimes don't see what the people down dealing with the day to day things are dealing with. And if we don't support them, give them the tools they need so they can excel in that they struggle. So it sounds like what you're talking about there is helping sure your salespeople have the tools they need to become a great salesperson. And if you give them the tools, the environment to do that, that's when you really help them excel and actually help yourself excel as the business owner. Is that, did I get that right? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that. It, yeah, it's not only the tools; it's the it's the like the actual like understanding as well. Because if they don't feel understood in terms of like where they're at, they're going to just think that they're never making progress in what in what they're doing. Because a lot of times you have great salespeople who never get encouragement, who never have support from whoever's leading them, because the leaders demanding and wants always wants the next best thing and so let me rephrase what i heard in the last one i like it so instead of banging their head against the wall and feel like they're going nowhere you want to right. make sure they see that they're on a path to progress and it's like right. any skill that we're learning if we see that we're not getting better it's tough to stick with something but if we feel right. oh my gosh i'm getting a little bit better at this i can see where it could potentially end up that's when people feel really good about themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So help give your people a growth path out there. <laughs> um, and if you don't, and, and I get a distance for a while in my life, I said, I'm never going to work for a company again or a person again, or even for myself doing something where I don't grow as a person. And what right. I know in my teaching, when I help people grow, they feel better. And it sounds like that's what you do a lot of help salespeople grow and help CEOs or whoever's running the company grow in a way that they can have the awareness now to help their people from wherever they're at. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And help them if there's patterns that they're having that are getting in the way of them growing, I help them to identify the patterns and then break through them. Because once you can have that, because it's typically it's patterns that get in a lot of people's ways. And once you can get through that, like anything else, you can have more of the success that you want. Oh, I really like that too. So helping people see their patterns. So mm -hmm. if they're positive, obviously keep doing, maybe do more of them. If they're negative, those are the patterns you need to break through to get to somewhere next level and next level. So it's powerful. Um, I mean, I love when people help me see a pattern that I couldn't see because so many times in our blind spots, we have patterns that we just can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I'll give you one for me was uh, I didn't realize that when I was wrong on the outside, my, it made me feel wrong on the inside. That insight was in my blind spot. And seeing that right. allowed me to change and implement new things around that. Is there any stories that you have around like a, a sales team or salesperson you helped, um, you know, overcome one of those patterns and get to another level? Yeah. Yeah. So I had a, I had a client who had a, a limiting belief when they started working with me that they, they couldn't be straightforward with their sales conversations because they thought that they were being too pushy. And then I helped them to realize that just like you would tell a friend the truth, that you it's important that you just tell the person that you're talking to the truth. And they had never really, they were always scared of, actually like having the conversation like that but once they got out once they understood that it, they really were helping somebody out it helped them to get over it and then they they went and did fifty thousand in sales in that month because they went from well i'm nervous to close people to well i'm confident in my closing now because i understand that when i'm asking somebody to do business with me or talent making a recommendation to them. It's like, I'm talking to a friend. So now I feel comfortable making that recommendation versus kind of being like nervous like I was before. Uh, that's powerful. So helping someone see that if you're talking to a friend, of course you tell them the truth. And and even the telling truth to so some people is, hey, we better not do business together, but telling the truth, oh my gosh, I can see how you're gonna benefit from this business. Gives you a level of confidence, especially when you're speaking the truth. Because I know for me, I've been programmed I hate to lie. Um, it bothers me to lie. So I'm, you're going to feel my energy just go way down when I'm lying. But when I'm speaking the truth and confident that I can help someone out, that's a very different conversation with someone. And most people are likely more likely to sign on the bottom line if they feel like the person's speaking the truth, cares about them, and giving them the honest facts of how this could benefit them. So I think that's powerful. Right. Yeah. Any other examples that you would like to share that, uh, that you know, what's happening or what's expanded your business or what's how you've helped other uh, clients? Yeah, well, one of my uh, 
So I, I, I work with a group of real estate professionals because I do, I do individual and group coaching now. And in one of the group sessions that we were having, one of the clients that I was talking to had a breakthrough because they, they realized that they were just really nervous about how they were coming across in some of their cold calls and their belief was that they really need to ask more questions rather than just kind of getting right into it and telling the prospect what they need to hear and helping them with the urgency that they need to hear rather than like waiting till waiting till later down the road. And so we, we, we changed that and I helped them to see that, you know, if, if like you knew that this was going to be the most important thing to them, how would you be talking to them about this? And they, their mindset switched and they went to a, well, I'd be saying like, look, you need to do this now because of this and this and this and this and this. And so it was a little in the group setting, it helped them to get this tweak on realizing how they need to communicate from a sales perspective. And then one of the other salespeople in the group saw that too and went, oh yeah, I need, I need to communicate with that same level of urgency because I'm doing the exact same thing. So it was cool to see that in another and more of a, a group setting as well. I, I love that you're doing group coaching. I think it's one of the most powerful things you can do in terms of you tap into the, I love tapping into the wisdom of the room. So another salesperson can help the other one see kind of mirroring each other. And correct me if I'm wrong on this. Here's one of my favorite examples, I think, of what you shared is the if you would, how would you feel about a doctor if you went into a doctor's office and the doctor just looked at you and just said, you know, you need these five medicines, go out with my nurse and take these five medicines. You go, whoa, doc, I haven't even told you what, what's wrong with me. And the doctor asks a series of questions, does a series of tests, and then goes, then they prescribe, oh, this one medicine would really help you out then you're much more confident taking that medicine just as you are buying something from a sales professional. If they've really gotten to know you personally, go, oh, you've, wanted to underst you've understood me, you know what my needs are, and now you're suggesting what's in my best interest. Does that fit what you're talking about? Yes, 100%. Yeah, that's, that's one of the best examples I've seen of it because so much, so many times as a salesperson, we know we can benefit them or we think one of those two. And we just go into, hey, you need this versus asking the questions to make sure they really do need what you're offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. What, else, what else has got you excited out there in this new world, uh, Lucas? Because I see you expanding where others are contracting. So what's the difference in your business that keeps you expanding? Well, I mean, I'm just excited by the opportunity for healing. I mean, I think that, and I mean that like with myself and I think a lot of it, because we've all gone through a shitload in the last two years. And that's part of, you know, from like an emotional standpoint, I've been doing a lot of my own healing of things that happened to me that I never really worked through before. And that I experienced during, during COVID. And when you can work through a lot of the emotional things that you've experienced from when you're a salesperson, when you're a business owner, it makes all the difference because you can be stuck on something and not even, and not even know it's very similar to what I was talking about with limiting beliefs on, on uh, a deeper level. And I'm excited about this because I'm starting to introduce this, this sort of work to my clients and it's helping them to, to be more effective because of what it can do. And I think that that's, uh, a lot of people are still going going through that reconciliation of everything that they experience. And it's crucial. It's why a lot of people are still st stuck where they were. It's because they you know, haven't worked through a lot of the things that were bogging them down in uh, in the first place. And you got to do that to grow. All right. Let me, I, I, feel, I feel you here because it's made, a, I think made a huge, huge difference in my life too. I did the inner work. And so I could be better on the outside for other people. And it sounds like you've done that and you're now helping some of the people you coach do their own inner work so they can be better at their sales position or their entrepreneurial, uh, they're leading their own business. So the inner work, I believe for me, has helped me be so much better at everything I do in even some very unique ways. Is that, is that what you were saying there? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I, and more people are becoming starting to become open to it now just because everybody has been through so much like everybody's got their own deals and i'm i'm excited by the prospect that i we have a opportunity i think for a more open world which would be cool uh, what a gift you're giving to people because you know i i say when i'm working with bigger organizations i say your customer service team is actually a reflection of you <laughs> and yeah <laughs> And because we, if it's a big organization, you're, you're reflecting into your, your direct reports. They're reflecting into theirs and all the way down. Now, if your customer service people are short, not helpful, stuck by the rules, they go, oh, I can tell a little bit how the CEO is over the organization. And the more work we do on the cell, ourselves, the better leader we can be for our people at work, for the people in our personal life, and for ourselves. And uh, it sounds like not only are you helping them become better salespeople and business leaders, you're helping them be better for themselves and the people in their private life as well. Exactly. Exactly. Cause it's across the board for people who are in our shoes, you know, it's like just because you're, you go home and you take the business with you, whether you want to or not. I love that you said that. And you know, it blows me away when people say it's business. It was nothing personal. Okay. So you just, <laughs> after you shut the door at your business, you've totally forgot about that thing. <laughs> It's all yeah. business. It's all personal. Even our personal lives, if we're struggling at home, we're bringing that to work. Now, some people are pretty good at, you know, closing that box and being focused at work. But I know even the best of them, it's still impacting their performance at work. And their work performance is impacting how they are with their kids, their family, their significant other, um, just even their personal life. Yeah, that's how I was for a very long time. I mean, I was able to kind of compartmentalize like my, I was very good at like keeping what was going on in my personal life out of my business. And during COVID that did not happen. Like my personal life started really messing with my business and it really, it was, it was horrible. And I never, I thought that this was a, this was a thing. I mean, Tiger Woods, another great example of this as well where it's like, you think you, there's only so far that you can go without, without doing some sort of work on it. <laughs> yeah. And what, what would you say was a big breakthrough for you personally that helped you um, give you space in your personal life, but also then brought to your professional life? Yeah, it's a great question. I would say one of the bigger ones was just that I could show up and be enough as I was, because I was, trying so hard to do like and show up in relationships with girls for example i was thinking i had to be all these things that i need to be to like be attractive and i because i had had some struggles with my my uh my romantic relationships during covid because i was i was isolated and not really dating and then when i started to come back out it was like you know it was literal reintegration to that sort of situation so i was doing I was doing too much and once i had and i was doing the same thing in my business so once i i made the connection and i was like i was like oh my god i'm trying to do so much like because of something i think i need to make up for and then i realized like lucas you don't need to do all that stuff like you're good like the way you bring so much to the table already it led to me like getting rid of a lot of stuff that I was doing that was not helpful for my clients, a lot of stuff in my sales conversations that was just fluff and me staying out of insecurity. And so like everything else flourished once I had more flourished once I had that recognition. So you have insight from your personal life that you took it back even into your professional life. And then you also triggered me on this. I love finding humor in things. It's after we're used to this Zoom interaction. I can see uh, yourself out on a, a, a date in public and you know what I'm not in the zoom room now <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. or even, even another version I think we're losing connection I'm sorry my internet is going out <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah exactly it was like trying to learn how to connect with another human being I was like what do I do in this situation again it's like oh you're real yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. I like it. Is there anything else, you know, you'd like to share right now? We can always do this again, but is there anything else you wanted to add to this particular call? Yeah. Well, I would, I, I would urge people, I mean, if, 
you know, you find yourself saying something like, you know, hey, I know what I need to do, but I, I can't get, get myself to do it, or I can't seem to get through to my, my, my sales people or the people in my life that are important to me, reach out and, and have, have, a, have a conversation with me because now is, is the best time to do something like that because there, we're in a very unique period of time where like our own personal development has all been affected in a very crazy way. And it's important to address that because if you don't do it now, then at some point it, it will rear its head up. So I would say that that's the most important thing I want to leave people with is with the importance of just addressing what is going on in your head because it will help you to achieve your business and personal goals. And um, you can also find me at radicalsalescoaching.com. I love that, Lucas. And so they can find you at RadicalSalesCoaching.com. Any other mm -hmm. ways they should connect with you? Um, I would say they can, they can shoot me. My, my email is Lucas at RadicalSalesCoaching.com as well. Those would probably be the best ways to so Zip off a quick email to Lucas. Lucas at RadicalSalesCoaching.com. And did you say you were offering you know, a cons consultation with anyone that's considering those ideas? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, reach out to Lucas, get that consultation, see if there's a fit that he could help you, uh, whether what he shares with you on the phone right there or on the Zoom call, or if uh, doing a longer consultation makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Lucas, for sharing your wisdom. I love meeting people that are expanding in these times, personally and professionally. So thank you for taking your time, Lucas. You bet. Happy to be here, Chris. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.